For centuries, Jews were persecuted in almost all countries of Europe. They were pushed to the fringes of society, and in some cases, completely excluded. The persecution of the Jews then culminated in the Second World War, one of the darkest chapters in history. In order to ensure that history would never be repeated, a plan was put into action that had already been discussed as early as the 19th century. The Jews were to be given their own state in which they could live peacefully. So in 1948, under the protection of the United States, the State of Israel was eventually founded in the Middle East. But in fact, the location in the Middle East was just one of many proposals. Originally, there were plans for a Jewish state in Albania, but also plans for a state in the US, in Eastern Russia, and even in Uganda. In total, 30 different places were considered for a potential Jewish state. Let's take a look at some of these places, why their proposals were discarded, and why it ultimately turned out to be the Middle East. Initial plans existed as early as the early 19th century. One of the first proposals dates back to 1820, when a Jewish politician from New York was one of the first to advocate Zionism, the establishment of a Jewish state. He bought a large part of Grand Island, located in the Niagara River in the state of New York. On this island, he founded the city of Ararat, named after the biblical resting place of Noah's Ark. But the idea actually convinced very few people at the time, which is why the plans were quickly discarded and the city was abandoned. Considerably more successful was the plan of the British. They too advocated for a homeland for all Jews, and therefore developed the British Uganda program. The goal was to give the Jewish people a part of British East Africa as a homeland. The British presented the offer to the founder of the Zionist Society, Theodore Herzl, who presented the plan at the 6th Zionist Congress in 1903. The Uganda program was heavily debated at the time. In the end, however, it was still rejected. The reason for this was that a large part of the proposed territory was already populated by the Maasai people and the terrain was also considered rather dangerous due to the flora and fauna. In addition, there were already first calls for the establishment of a state in Palestine at the time and the supporters feared that this idea would become impossible if the Uganda program was accepted. In 1928, the Soviet Union became involved in the discussion about a Jewish nation. The USSR offered the Zionists a settlement area in the far east of the country, near the border with China. The Soviet leadership did not do this unselfishly. They pursued a proactive plan with the settlement of the Jews in this area, since large parts of the far east were not settled at the time. For several decades, attempts had been made in vain to bring settlers to this region, and now the Jews were to be moved to this region through propaganda. However, the Jewish community in the Soviet Union at that time was mainly rooted in the West, in today's Ukraine and Belarus. Many Jews then accused Stalin of anti-Semitism, saying that he wanted to remove the Jews as far as possible from the Soviet Union's center of power. Thus, the plan was doomed to fail from the beginning, especially since the proposed region had extreme climate conditions, consisted largely of swampland, and the Chinese border was considered extremely dangerous. But there was still another relatively realistic plan for a Jewish state in Europe. In 1935, the British Zionist and journalist Leo Elton traveled to Albania, which was considered very pro-Jewish and one of very few countries that did not have a history of persecuting Jews. He held talks with the Albanian government, which welcomed Jewish immigration and asserted that religion intolerance was quite unknown in Albania. Leo Elton wrote in his travel report, There is no reason whatsoever to suppose that Jewish settlers would not live in complete harmony with the various members of the population. The country also had the advantage of being completely cut off from industrialized Europe, yet offered extremely fertile soil for agriculture. It was expected that this would provide for at least 5 million Jewish residents. But despite this, the plan ultimately failed. The reasons are not clearly understood today. The plan probably emerged too soon before the Second World War. The systemic persecution of Jews in Europe was already in full swing, and in 1939, Albania was eventually occupied by Italy and later by the German Empire. After the war, the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine was then promoted by the USA, whereby all other plans were discarded. In this way, the Jews had a protecting power and moreover, Palestine was considered the original homeland by the Jews. Despite this, the Albanians' esteem for the Jews was still evident during the World War. In defiance of the occupation by the Axis powers, all the Jews in the country were hidden and protected so that they eventually all survived. In fact, after the war, the number of Jews was even greater than before since Albania was considered a safe haven in a war-torn Europe. 